Okay, so last bit, we solved this problem using mole ratio. Again, if you need a guide, like this is probably the best guide that I can give you, all right? So your desired substance is gonna equal what you start with, which you find right from the equation, times the mole ratio, keeping the desired substance over top of the starting substance. So the next step would be is if, once you figure out your answer, okay, using the mole ratio, okay, you might have to convert it into other units that are wanted. Like I said, for the time being, we're going to be working with one step, but two-step equations, they're coming. They're, they're going to get here. We can do it. You guys know how to convert into and out of moles. Everybody's okay with that. So you might have to go from moles back to grams, or maybe you have to go from moles to atoms, okay? So if you're calculating grams, grams equals the number of moles times molar mass. So if you have, you know, five moles of water and you want to convert that to grams, you do five times the molar mass over one. So one mole, that is. And you would get 90.10 grams of H2O. Again, it's conversions. You guys have done it a hundred times but that would be like a two-step equation. So going from like grams to moles, then back into grams, okay? We're not gonna be focusing on that just yet, but it's helpful to know where this lesson is going. So if we're going from atoms, okay, you would have to take the moles that you discovered from your problem and convert it into atoms. So if we, if our problem yielded five moles of sodium atoms, we would do five times Avogadro's number over one mole, and it would give us 3.11, 3.011 times 10 to the 24th. All right. This is review. Nothing you haven't seen before. Okay. Let's do some more practice problems. This will probably be the last vid that I post for today and tomorrow. And then we'll start doing some formative assessments, getting you guys used to setting up mole ratios, desired over starting, et cetera, et cetera, some review. So phosphoric acid is one of the most widely produced industrial chemicals in the world. And it's useful in lab settings, cleaning settings. So it's got a big industrial lifespan here. So most of our phosphoric acid is produced by wet process, which involves the reaction of phosphate rock, okay? with sulfuric acid. So right here is our chemical equation. It is balanced, okay? We'll see it on the next slide a little bit more clearer. So it's asking me to calculate the number of moles of phosphoric acid. If it's asking me for something, it's desiring it, okay? Remember that. Formed by the reaction of 10 moles of sulfuric acid. H2SO4. So here's my start, 10 moles. That's the given. That's the starting information. So I set my equation up. I can write instantaneously down my start, 10 moles of H2SO4, sulfuric acid. I have to multiply that start by my mole ratio. And you'll notice the desired is phosphoric acid, which is the H3PO4. I look at my balanced chemical equation. My balanced chemical equation says that I have three moles of H3PO4 produced. So I put my three mole up top over my start, which is H2SO4, which is five mole. A common mistake, folks, is people don't go to the equation for the mole ratio. They go to the problem, and you don't want to do that. So for this mole ratio, this three over five here, it comes directly from the equation. So my desired is three moles of H3PO4 over five moles of sulfuric acid, okay? I plug this into a calculator, 10 times three over five, and I'm left with six moles of phosphoric acid, 